Hello and welcome to the Monday Night Football Player Prop Bets brought to you by Lions.com. I am your host, Matthew Amato, and as always, I am joined by Jason Gilbo. So, this is a Sunday night, or Monday Night Football game. Man, I can't even get the night correct because I couldn't care less about this game. However, I do like some of the player props, and there's one player in particular that I really love. And Jason, if you'll let me, I'm just going to jump into it about my uh, excitement for one Jameis Winston. Go, oh, get ready. All right, so Jameis Winston, terrible human being. I'm just going to get that out of the way. However, as a football player, he's been fantastic this year. I think he's really playing well. He's playing a little bit more conservatively, but Sean Payne is asking him to do something, and he's doing it well. Maybe it's because he can see again with his laser eye surgery. I don't know what it is, but he's going against you know the 25th ranked pass defense in the NFL they haven't really been able to cause any pressure Jamal Adams is the best pass rusher on Seattle and he's a safety um so with all that said i think Winston has a game that's very very efficient like we saw in week 1 where you know 200 yards but 3 TDs no picks and he's just picking apart Seattle so i really like the over 1 and a half TDs at plus 140 i think that is a very 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 generous line Um, I I would love to see this go to two and a half at like plus 290, though I don't know if you can find that on any sports books. If there's some alternate lines, let me know. Um, I'm not going to go with this total passing yards because like I said, I really think he can hit that on 170 yards passing like we saw in week one. But what I did like was his under on interceptions, which I don't know if I can find. All right, they're down here. So under 0.5 interceptions. So basically... Two TDs, no picks, and you can parlay those at plus 333, and I like it. I just think there's no reason for Winston in this game to be overly aggressive. I think the Saints' defense is going to shut down Geno Smith. It's going to shut down Alex Collins or Rashad Penny or whoever the running back is, and the Saints just go down, score a couple on that bad secondary for Seattle, and take care of business. No arguments here, man. I, <laughs> uh, I think Winston has a, a solid game. Um, I think this offense, uh, I, I know Washington is making every pass offense look good, but I actually liked kind of what they did. I think they start to kind of really find their rhythm uh, over the last few weeks. So I'm with you. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the biggest scare here, I think, is that an interception, which, you know, sometimes they just happen even when a quarterback's playing well, but Champagne has been so conservative with Winston that I just don't see it in this game. I think the only way it happens is with a good defense who can hit Winston and cause him to kind of miss a throw or rush something. Yeah, and I think it would, you know, it's one of those things where it could be like a tip ball type yeah. thing. It's, you know, just totally unlucky. All right, so your player props. We'll, we'll start with the first one that kind of has to do with mine, and that's the over on receiving for Alvin Kamara at 30.5. Yeah, over there... Um, like you said, they've been really conservative and I know people have kind of talked about Kamara in terms of just not, not getting, you know, this, the same workload in terms of the pass offense that he used to. And that's, you know, that's going to be the case. Um, but he still has 22 targets, um, you know, this season. And, and I still like how they've been using him and over 80% of the snaps and, and, all but one game this year, um, you know, he's handling the workload and he's going to come in. He's going to see, I, I project him around five to six targets in this game, um, especially with the way Seattle has allowed a ton of receptions to running backs on the year. They've also allowed over 58 receiving yards to running backs uh, and they're 28th in DVOA against pass catching backs this season. So uh, everything kind of lines up for Kamara to have a really solid game. And, and it certainly does pair well with how kind of conservative they've played this year. So um over 30 and a half, I know it's only hit once this year, uh, but this is actually a really great matchup for it to hit again. I, I completely agree, and I think that's a big stat there. Seattle has not – they just don't play well against opposing running backs, and that's rushing and receiving. Um, they just don't have someone who can cover Kamara. Uh, that, that's basically what it comes down to, unless they take Jamal Adams out of the position that he's most comfortable with and try and match him up with Kamara which I just don't see happening in this game. I do want to address something because I feel like we really a comment about it. Yes, Winston has been passing the ball very deep, but we mean conservative in the way of, I feel like Sean Payne's really picking and choosing when to take those shots. It is a lot of rush, short pass, short pass, Taysom Hill rush or something like that, and then hit him on a play action for something deep that likely is not going to end up in a turnover. If anything, it's thrown too deep and the pass catcher doesn't catch it. 
Um, shout out to Marquez Calloway. He made a couple of great plays. And uh, who's the other player? Harris also has had some great catches for uh, the Saints. But yeah, when we mean conservative, I don't expect Winston to just be gunslinging intermediate routes the entire game. It's going to be a lot of short stuff and then a play action deep every once in a while. All right, so finally switching to the other side of the ball, we have one more over, and that's Gerald Everett over 19 and a half receiving yards for Seattle. Yeah, I had to dig through the weeds here um, to get some of these player props, but I, the more I looked into this one, Gerald Everett over 19 and a half receiving yards. Um, we kind of look at the way the Saints defense is, is set up. Obviously, a pretty solid secondary. Um, you know, they're ranking just about top five, top 10 in every defensive, pass defensive metric. Um, and that's kind of actually pushed a lot of targets to tight ends. Um, for them, they're averaging 8.6 targets per game against the Saints. That's the fourth most in the league. Uh, Everett's going to play around 35 to 40 snaps. You know, this is a guy who's still going to give some weight to some other players at times. Uh, but he's hit this prop in three or four games. And we look at the Saints defense, they've allowed five tight ends and not particularly great ones to hit this prop as well this season. So I think Everett's going to get a couple of catches in this one, especially just with the secondary matching up with Metcalf and Lockett. Um, and we've seen Geno Smith look his way a couple of times already since coming in. So um, 19 and a half is certainly doable here. This just makes too much sense. Like there's not a lot of props out right now for Monday night football, and there may not be a lot out until a couple hours before game time when more information is available to sports books. But th this is a good one just from a, standpoint of how this game's going to go. Jason and I think both project the Saints to be somewhat in control and Seattle have trouble moving the ball. Um, with how good the Saints have been against running backs, it's going to be short passes, and those short passes are likely to go to Gerald Everett. I mean, there's not much else to look at. And like you said, the Saints, the one place that they're kind of soft is against the tight end because they're willing to give up those five, ten-yard completions and then uh, smother you on the ground game and then get a pick when you try and go long on them. So, I like Gerald Everett. I like this over, um, and I'm glad it was being offered because there's not a lot of props right now up. Um, any last thoughts, Jason? No, just thank God next week we don't have to talk about Geno Smith. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited to get uh, good games back up. No offense to your Colts for Sunday night football. But the... Both the Monday night and Sunday night, it's like I have a feeling how they're going to go, and we both projected a certain way for our player props, but, man, I just, I'm just i just not excited to watch them. I don't think it's going to be good football whatsoever. We'll say that. Now, um, next Sunday, though, Cowboys-Vikings. I'm pumped for that one. That's going to be a great player prop one. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping there's no injuries so we can get the player props up early, maybe get the video up earlier to you guys. But um, with that said, if you want to be notified when that video goes up, you can click the bell. And if you have not yet, please hit subscribe. It really helps us out. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you disliked it, you can give it a dislike. Let us know your favorite picks for this game in the comment section down below. And we'll see you next time for Thursday Night Football Player Props very soon.